Good evening, dear all. Welcome to English Without Borders. Uh, we are so excited to see all of our followers joining from different countries, from Tajikistan, from Brazil, from Georgia, from Ukraine as well. And uh, we are super excited to uh, host this webinar. And uh, for the first time at English Without Borders, we host four speakers from Ukraine and uh, we convey our best wishes to all our Ukrainian colleagues and uh, wish uh, that very soon the peace will be restored in Ukraine. And um, so uh, with great pleasure, let me introduce our speakers today. Uh, so we uh, welcome Dr. Ilona Hutsi, Dr. Ilona Lechner, uh, uh, Dr. Erzbet Barany and Marta Febian, who are going to talk about lessons learned from online teaching practical tips on how to improve online teaching and tertiary education. Uh, Dr. Ilona Hutsi and Dr. Lechner, Dr. Erzbet Barani and Marta Fabian are language teachers, teacher trainers and researchers at the Ferenc Rakodzi Transcarpathian Hungarian College of Higher Education in Berehov, Ukraine. Uh, Dr. Ilona Hutsi, uh, an English teacher holds a PhD in language pedagogy. Dr. Ilona Lechner, a German teacher, holds a PhD in cognitive linguistics. Uh, Dr. Erzbet Baran, a Ukrainian teacher, holds a PhD in Slavic languages, uh, linguistics. And uh, Marta Febin, an English teacher, holds an MA in English philology. Uh, since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, their primary research interest has been teaching English via distance education. They've carried out investigations focusing on online English teaching in both secondary and tertiary education in the Transcarpathian region of Ukraine. They regularly present their findings at international conferences and publish their results in renowned academic journals. Their research interest has taken a new direction since February 24, 2022, and they are currently researching which aspects of distance education help their students learn foreign languages the most effectively despite uh, the challenging circumstances. And um, I'm so honored to welcome all of you, our dear speakers, and um, I'm uh, encouraging our participants to use this opportunity to actively engage in this webinar and ask your questions after the presentation to our speakers. Um, so over to you, Dr. Ilona Hutsi. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let me express my, um, on behalf of my colleagues, uh, our gratitude to you for letting us give this talk today. And we are going to, uh, to talk about the lessons we have learned from online teaching. And uh, our talk is addressed at uh, tertiary um, tutors and teachers. But we do hope that if there are uh, um, teachers from secondary schools or primary schools will also benefit and learn something new from this uh, talk. Let me share my uh, screen first. Um, so, as uh, Nasiba has uh, already introduced us, we are uh, teachers majoring in English, um, German, and Ukrainian. And we come from Transcarpathia or Zakarpathia Oblast uh, in Ukraine, uh, which is the westernmost uh, territory of the country. You can see in the slide in the map uh, our region borders on Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, and uh, Romania. Um, the region is multi-ethnic, uh, with national minorities like Hungarians living here, and the population of uh, Zakarpata is about 1,200,000 inhabitants, about whom uh, about, about uh, 155,000 uh, of whom are representatives of the Hungarian minority, and uh, we are also members of this minority. The biggest city of our region and its administrative center is Ushhorod, um, 
but we come from a small town, Barakova, which is only six kilometers uh, from the Ukrainian-Hungarian uh, state border. There is a higher educational establishment in our town, uh, which is the Ferenc Rákóczi II Transcaprison Hungarian uh, College of Higher Education, uh, where we have been working for over 20 years now. The year 2020 is uh, crucial for humanity and will be memorable uh, for a long time, as the rapid spread of COVID-19 has fundamentally changed our lives across the globe. And while we were still optimistic in January 2020 uh, that uh, the disease from the distant China would not reach us, uh, on the 12th of March uh, 2020, uh, the national quarantine was announced in Ukraine. Um, and um, the full closure of the country was initially only for one month and then extended weekly according to the current uh, situation. However, uh, during this time, education did not stop, of course. Um, we had to move on uh, to the online space and the teaching process uh, or the learning process was continued in cyberspace. This was the case at our college too. A few words on the college. You can see a photo of the, um, the college uh, is in the center of uh, Barahova in this uh, side. I am sorry to interrupt you. So the slide is not going on. So we oh. can see only the first slide. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Right. I try again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for letting me go. Sorry. You see it now? Does it move? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. I did not notice. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I was talking about the college, which is a relatively new establishment, uh, only 27 years old. Uh, it was uh, established uh, to support the uh, Hungarian higher education in the region and to provide uh, competent uh, teachers uh, for the 100 Hungarian schools in, uh, in Transcarpathia. Um, three years after the uh, outbreak of the COVID-19, uh, it is common evidence now what impact it has had on education worldwide. Uh, there have been several quarantine periods during which uh, knowledge del delivery uh, was uh, realized in an online mode via distance learning. New terms have been coined uh, to better describe the ongoing processes. In this slide, you can see the, some of these new terms. For example, Current teaching is in fact uh, online teaching in times of currency. Another recent term uh, is emergency remote teaching, referring to the transition from the in-person teaching mode to online teaching due to some emergency situation. Uh, in uh, 2020, this uh, emergency situation was the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And now in uh, 2023, uh, in Ukraine, this emergency situation is unfortunately uh, the war that is ongoing. Now we would like to further uh, clarify some of these uh, commonly used terms. Marta. Okay, thank you. So uh, we all know that the digital age has opened and it is still opening new opportunities in the field of teaching and learning. 
Nevertheless, it was a coronavirus lockdown that made both teachers and learners all over the world face a new challenge how to cope with the difficulties of distance education. Neither teachers nor learners were prepared for this form of education in Ukraine, uh, like all over the, over the world, and they tried to find different solutions. We cannot teach any longer in the old way, said Ken Bente in 2021 in a webinar organized by Pearson. It is doubtless that the daily routine of any educator in whichever part of the world they would live will never be the same as before. The new reality is felt around us evidently, brings um, its own norms to our lives and professional development uh, and activities. Uh, Beretsky provides useful advice for educators working in higher education. Uh, firstly, uh, he says that we have to focus on learning goals, outcomes, and link selected interfaces and solutions. Secondly, we have to define the priorities both in the content of the course and in connection with the technical background. Thirdly, we should be flexible and open. Uh, try to take into account the needs and possibilities of students as much as possible. The role of assessment is central in both the traditional and non-traditional uh, modes of teaching. Due to the limited physical connection between the teachers and the students, assessment and feedback are partially important factors in distance learning, where the significance of the practice a uh, Davison called assessment of learning, uh, assessment for learning, can be appreciated, distinguishing it from assessment of learning. Assessment of learning is done for the purpose of grading, evaluating students' outcomes using the existing well-established procedures and methods, while assessment for learning requires different priorities, new procedures, and new commitments to learning. The main features of assessment uh, in EFL or assessment for learning are, number one is assessment is embedded in teaching and learning. Number two, learning objectives are shared with students and students are taught how to recognize desired norms. Number three is that students engage in continuous peer and self-assessment. Number four, uh, constructive qualitative feedback helps students identify the next steps they need for learning. Number five is that assessment data is regularly reviewed and considered by teachers, parents, and students. It is assumed that all students are able, able to improve, said Davidson finally. Uh, in EFL, assessment has two key roles, to inform and shape decisions about what to do next, helping teachers decide what to teach further and more importantly, to help students understand what they have already learned and what more they need to learn in the future. The emphasis is on why students do not learn well and how they can be helped to improve and not just focus on teacher using assessment to determine what knowledge students have acquired. A key concept for evaluation is exactly what we measure. Do we assess students' knowledge? Or perhaps the use of taught vocabulary and language structures? Or both at the same time? In traditional face-to-face -face learning, of course, this was also measured using paper-based uh, model tests. However, during online education, the method of measurement has changed, although its purpose has remained the same. The measurement method has also adapted to new reality. So, paper based tests have been replaced by online ones. Jotskovic emphasizes that one form of assessing students' knowledge is live, real time reporting, which can be accomplished using video conferencing, telephone applications, uh, and telephone applications. Another form is time delayed remote reporting, for example, worksheets, tests, questionnaires homework presentations, mind maps, etc. 
He also believes that in digital education, formative, that is developing, shaping, supporting evaluation, plays a role rather than summative evaluation, which may be based on the electronic portfolio collected online in the digital agenda. It can collect students' work, notes, online consultations, instructor feedback, projects. However, it is advisable to use formative assessment in distance education. Argus claims that the notion of online or distance learning is not new, and it has an enormous bulk of academic literature. We accept the description of Paulson et al, who characterizes this mode of content delivery uh, as teachers and learners being physically separated from each other, involving an educational establishment providing grounds for the educational process, as well as applying the internet for teaching and student-teacher interaction. However, whereas Diaz believes that there is a need to use other terms to give a more precise definition of the situation that was caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. This new term used by Hodge is emergency remote teaching or ERT. In his view, it is an alternative teaching method that needs to be switched to when a crisis situation arises. Uh, ERT aims to provide temporary access to education that can be reliably delivered in an emergency or crisis situation. And when the situation has ceased to exist, education will revert to its original form. Uh, Camel concluded that face-to-face -face learning and distance education are effective in different ways. In addition, Orani came to the conclusion that the knowledge gained on distance education in ERT would be of great value and use in future contingencies like natural disasters or times of conflict, like the situation in Ukraine is today. However, Camilleri urges education leaders and policymakers to embrace online education models and virtual assistance as they are here to stay in the post-COVID era. The rapid transition also meant rapid skill development for instructors who invested considerable time and effort in learning about online course design, as well as developing, a teaching, uh, and developing and teaching their courses. Tanasiewicz admits that the transition from traditional to remote teaching was difficult not only for the teachers, but for the learners and their parents too. But then she argues that in addition to teachers, students were also significantly more actively engaged in the teaching process than in face-to-face -face learning environment, and they had to meet the challenges of managing their own learning processes in a less formal virtual environment. Sumardi also found that although ERT was a successful teaching mode to substitute face-to-face -face instruction, less able students face difficulty in disciplining themselves to be more attentive during online classes, over which situation the teachers could have little control. Uh, concerning the Ukrainian context, certain advancements have been made in studying online learning from the beginning of the pandemic. Shevtseva outlined the main tendencies and challenges of online learning and emergencies. The researcher then emphasized that distance education is a crisis in its nature and it needs constant adaptation to the changing realities of the present. Stukalo revealed a lack of proper equipment and digital competencies for both the students and teachers, poor internet connection and the necessity for new approaches in organizing the class and individual assignments. Despite the difficulties, any problems uh, and problems, the results of the survey show that more than 70% of the students were satisfied with the quality of online education at university. The same technical issues, psychological discomfort, and an increase in time for correspondence for both teachers and students were defined by Prokopenko, 
uh, in, 19, in 2020. Among the positive aspects, they mentioned self-discipline, the experience of mastering the latest methodology, tools for online learning. Now, a few words about our research that we have carried out in our context and the lessons we have learned. With my colleagues, I have been investigating the ins and outs of uh, online language teaching since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. First, we conducted a questionnaire survey among both students and teachers comprising four groups and the budget population. Secondary school children, secondary school language teachers, language major, students in social education, and finally, lang uh, college uh, language teachers. Next, we carried out a case study at the tertiary level, applying the qualitative research design in which the data were collected from 34 higher education in structures in Ukraine with the help of retrospective interviews on issues related to DE and ERT in their institutions. The purpose of the research was to get empirical evidence on how DE was realized in the first and second quarantine period during the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 in Ukrainian higher educational establishment. The findings uh, have revealed the answer to our research question. The most challenging aspects of the pandemic for the respondents were as follows. Coping with the increased workload, coping uh, with the uncertainties of the pandemic, lack of knowledge about online teaching, and lack of support in the change of teaching practice. We have learned the following lessons. In relation to classroom management, respondents agreed that teaching takes more time online than offline. In relation to teaching language skills, more respondents agreed that reading, listening, and writing skills are taught effectively as on also online. However, speaking skills are better taught in face-to-face -face teaching. There is a fear that uh, the interpersonal relation with the students can be damaged if teaching is solely done online. Teachers are aware of the need of more training to teach online. In a virtual classroom, it is necessary to uh, eliminate the feeling of isolation by promoting feedback as one of the most crucial elements to make communication between students and teachers flow. In an additional effort must be made to improve the digital, digital competence of both educational actors. In this way, virtual classrooms will become a powerful didactic tool able to guarantee a higher quality teaching learning process. On the basis of the updated date, several groups of problems were identified. Problems of, the, of a technological nature associated with the improper digital infrastructures of Ukraine's higher educational institutes. An equal access of teachers and students to, to students to electronic devices uh, and internet connection. Problems of a methodological nature associated with the lack of methodological support and uh, special training programs for teachers to carry out distance instruction. Problems of a psychological nature associated with the development of motivation. Teachers 
commitment and establishing new communication patterns. Next, we would like to introduce the pedagogical implications from the research. Distance learning has advantages and disadvantages at the same time, but all in all, the experience gained in this period can contribute to the learning and teaching process in the future. At the secondary level, it can be considerable step towards implementing ICT into traditional teaching as both teachers and learners have improved their digital skills to a certain extent. Involving digital and uh, video technology into teaching in general and into language learning motivates learners. Video recordings made by teachers themselves or carefully selected online resources can be used any time later, even traditional teaching. As to motivation, we can state that distance learning was both motivating and demotivating at the same time. On the one hand, involving digital technology, video resources and films made learning more exciting and motivated learners intrinsically. The positive attitude of teachers and their attempt to help learners in this situation was also motivating for the learners. On the other hand, the lack of live explanations and of regular face-to-face -face control, the huge amount of material that had to be coped with along with difficulties the learning learners faced proved to be demotivating. Teachers should pay a lot of attention to developing learners' autonomy, motivating learners, should find more efficient ways of assessment and have to find ways to increase the number of online lessons. During the period of first school breakdown, learners faced a lot of difficulties and experienced a new form of teaching and learning for which they were not prepared. Those learners uh, whose attitude was serious enough and were able to manage their time well have coped with these difficulties and gained experience in a new form of learning that can be useful for them in the in their future studies, as in the in the digital age, online learning is becoming more and more popular and widespread. At the tertiary education level, our findings have revealed the following. First, most instructors surveyed by uh, us perceived the transition from face-to-face -to, -face to online learning as a negative experience. In contrast, they believed that students had a positive perception of the same transition partly because they were born in the digital age and the use of technology caused fewer problems for them. Second, uh, during synchronous online classes, primarily teaching students interaction was realized, while student-student interaction was neglected, mainly because of the lack of appropriate technical knowledge on the teacher's part. Third, the findings showed that students were more motivated when they had synchronous online lessons than when they were learning asynchronously. Furthermore, Younger students were more in the need of teacher motivation than older ones. Finally, concerning the ways of assessing students' perf student performance and knowledge, it was pr proven that the most effective way is ensuring both written and oral feedback for students. Based on the results, the following pedagogical implications have uh, been drawn. First, Teacher training course in distance learning are uh, of utmost importance for instructors. These could serve as part of their professional development. Second, it is advisable and more useful to have synchronous online lessons uh, with students on a regular basis in distance learning. Third, instructors should pay more attention to and put more effort into motivating freshmen and sophomores as they are the age group who need this and expect it from the teachers. Fourth, teachers should provide written feedback on students' performance as well as give oral evaluation by offering an opportunity to ask teachers about problematic issues when being assessed during online learning as a written plus oral variant of assessing students proved to be most effective in this respect. 
The results suggest that the, that the biggest and most common problem in both secondary and higher education was assessment and evaluation. Similarities were found in the responses of both target groups, as both uh, school teachers and college teachers complained that it was difficult to decide from time to time whether students solved a task on their own or whether they made use of external help. In the case of school children, parents or private teachers, and in the case of college students, friends, groupmates, or the internet. From these results, the pedagogical implication can be deduced that teachers should strive to build relationships based on trust with their students. This, of course, is much easier to accomplish in face-to-face -face education where teacher and student meet in person daily with physical presence and real-time conversations. Building trust in this test learning is a bigger challenge for teachers because it is not easy to converse with students in person. It is definitely necessary to use some kind of inter intermediate tool, for example, telephone or the internet. In any case, building mutual trust between teachers and the students is paramount in order to end the mistrust that a teacher and student oft experience as teachers themselves and meet. If the student trusts his or her teacher, they will not feel to need to cheat him or her during the testing. And if the teacher also trusts his or her student, he or she will no doubt uh, his um, or her honesty. Members of both target groups of our research mentioned that it was time consuming to prepare teaching materials for online learning and the marks the students or learners written assignments and give feedback on them. In addition, a great majority of school teachers and college tutors complained about the difficulties in assessing speaking and listening skills in distance learning. There can be one possible solution to this urgent pro problem. Teachers and tutors must acquire the skill of effective online ass assessment that in our new COVID reality can also be done online by participating in special MOOCs that focus on the issues in question. In addition, on several occasions, the quality of the internet connection was found to be poor, resulting in inequal access for students. For example, one internet service provider had better network quality than another. Thus, students who had a lower quality internet connection was, were disadvantages because they received the information late or were unable to meet the requirements on time, which frustrated them. And the difficulty for instructors in such cases was how they communicated and interacted with their students. Addressing problems relating to internet access is outside the scope of pedagogy. However, it is again clear that teachers need to address self-improvement in terms of proficiency in distance learning methods. Distance learning is a new reality today. We cannot afford to neglect or ignore the challenges, the opportunities, or the positive results that this new standard means. Therefore, it is advised for everyone involved to learn, adapt, and be constantly open to acquiring new knowledge and skills. Now my colleague is going to provide some practical tips on improving online English language teaching in tertiary education. We can't hear you. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, thank you. Uh, that is uh, yeah. towards the end of our talk. We'd like to give some uh, pra uh, practical tips on how uh, we can um, improve um, English language teaching in um, tertiary education. First of all, for every uh, tutor, it is a um, very useful thing to create uh, his or her own syllabus in which uh, all the aims are outlined clearly and all the requirements are outlined clearly so that the students. Uh, so that the students uh, uh, know what to expect uh, from a course. Then uh, offering live uh, lectures uh, is a, a very good idea. 
because uh, in this way, students can feel that uh, um, they are not alone and the cyberspace, the teacher is there, uh, especially if it is a synchronous lecture, a live lecture. But of course, uh, the tutor must remember um, not to do it if, in case the students have bad internet connection, for example. Then I use a variety of teaching methods like quizzes or games. A variety is always helpful because in this way, the tutor can uh, maintain the student's motivation. Provide timely feedback on uh, student work. Uh, at our college, we use the Google Classroom um, application and uh, you know that uh, um, there are um, tasks for the students that they have to accomplish and uh, we try to give timely feedback for them because students want to know immediately how well they performed and in this way we can support um, contact between and interaction of course uh, between the tutor and the student. Offer virtual office hours is again uh, something that is uh, uh, beneficial for the students mainly because this way they can uh, feel that uh, uh, they are cared for and they are supported by their uh, tutors. Facilitate collaboration. Collaboration is easier, of course, in face-to-face -face education when uh, the students can have a cup of uh, coffee and discuss their project work together um, in a cafe or just go somewhere, yeah. But in online education, when the uh, teaching is uh, uh, digital, uh, is in the digital mode, it is uh, very difficult to do, for example, work or, or um, um, project work. Therefore, it's uh, important that the teacher tries to facilitate this among the students. And uh, finally, uh, in this last slide, slide, you can see some further tips on uh, how uh, you can do um, what you can do to improve uh, language teaching in uh, uh, tertiary education, uh, like setting a time each week for students to just connect and chat. Um, they need to socialize. Uh, therefore, it's a very good idea if you start uh, your online class a bit early to allow students to socialize, to chit chat, you know. Uh, about uh, unimportant things even, or maybe about important things. Um, then at times ask students uh, to respond to how they are feeling about what they have just learned with emojis. Uh, it's good that uh, different applications have the function of uh, using emojis uh, through which, uh, or with the help of which students can express their feelings. Set aside time to have breakout rooms uh, so students can more easily interact and or do group work. And um, encourage students to put questions either in a chat or an other space such as an online notebook or a document. Uh, students must feel that uh, they have this right and they, they have this opportunity to ask back in face-to-face -face education, it's easy because uh, after the lecture is finished, uh, they can have their questions. But uh, on the um, in uh, online education, this is different. Therefore, we have to ensure them that they have this possibility to ask questions anytime. And the most crucial tip to take away from this webinar is remember to make your online classes more interactive, and this is very important so that uh, students interact with each other. Thank you very much for your attention. And of course, we'd like to uh, hear your questions, if any, and we'll try to answer them in the best possible way. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, and uh, once again, uh, dear speakers, uh, thank you for your time and for sharing uh, your research results with us. Uh, I, I've been just, you know, reading and also listening to your presentation. And in many cases, like, you know, the situation that you described in Ukraine 
uh, very similar to what we had during the pandemic in Tajikistan. And to be honest, yeah, we also have, uh, you know, a huge demand for English language teachers to acquire distance learning tips because, uh, you know, shifting from uh, in-person teaching uh, to online was a big challenge for many English language teachers. And um, we ourselves, when our project started, we were we have we were hoping that we will do more in-person activities, but then we were pushed to online, and uh, you know we tried to catch up with everything, and you know it was a good push for us to learn as fast as possible, and uh, yeah, to to learn more about like you know online platforms to bring uh, our audience there, and also to create. Uh, enabling environment for English language teachers to uh, to provide professional development opportunities and to create some platforms for their discussion and also uh, you know for uh, sharing their concerns and you know sharing the tips together. Thank you so much. And now uh, let us open the floor for questions and answers. Uh, so, uh, dear audience, please uh, use. Uh, yeah, use the chat box for your questions and ask your questions to uh, our teachers, uh, to our speakers, yeah, who are teachers as well. And also uh, our audience who are watching us on Facebook, uh, please your, uh, use the comment box to leave your questions and we will forward your questions to our speakers today. So I have a question, uh, if you don't mind, to start with, yeah. yeah? Uh, so uh, by now, like, uh, can you, see how the situation has changed since the pandemic and I mean in terms of like uh, you mentioned like uh, distance learning as distance teaching and uh, uh, we know that um, education uh, in emergency situation as you mentioned there was a ter terminology specifically used for that how the situation has changed since 2020 up to now Actually, uh, nobody talks about the pandemic now or the coronavirus uh, um, disease uh, because we have other concerns in the country, you understand. Um, in our region, in uh, Zakarpatia, uh, the situation is uh, quite peaceful, so to say. We hear the sirens all the time, daily, twice or three times even sometimes. <laughs> but... Uh, it, for us, it means only, so to say, in inverted commas, only to go to the bomb shelter and uh, have our classes there. Uh, but of course, in other parts of Ukraine, it is uh, very much different because uh, they are, uh, so the bomb alert for them uh, means real bomb alert and uh, bomb attacks. So uh, yeah, it is it's very, very sad, of course, um, well, so uh, nobody, well, in some regions, uh, it is still the online learning that is going on in uh, uh, our, or at our college, we have the face-to-face -face, uh, teaching. So we have face-to-face -face classes. We are, we are lucky. I can see a uh, question. What do you think? Do the students get the knowledge uh, quicker and better online or offline? Well, thank you for the question. Uh, the fact is that everything depends on the students. We tutors, of course, do our best that we can. But uh, for some students, as uh, you heard uh, uh, about uh, our research results, for some students, uh, for example, um, online teaching, uh, means uh, uh, better opportunities. But for others, of course, uh, it's uh, vice versa. So everything depends on the students. Well. May I add? Yeah, sure. <laughs> we, still, we didn't put any quantitative uh, uh, results into our research, uh, but um, uh, we also counted, so in the questionnaire, uh, that some students, um, uh, especially those who are more inverted and those with a higher uh, learner autonomy, 
um, and uh, those who can uh, manage their time, so better time management, uh, it was 17% of all our students uh, who, had, who said that they um, uh, managed to, to learn everything um, better online. So what they supported their uh, position by is that they didn't have to travel. Uh, they, so they could save a lot of time. They could even work uh, at home. They could uh, even have time for reading. And, and, and that time that they usually spend um, uh, for traveling and socializing with each other. So uh, they, they, they could spend in another way. So 17% uh, of um, our respondents uh, felt that they acquired the material uh, online better. But as far as I remember, 58% uh, uh, said the opposite. And there were some... Um, students who did not want to decide or just could not decide. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, like, uh, you know, the findings that you mentioned right now, Dr. Uh, Martha Fabian, do you think this is related also to learning styles of learners? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I think uh, my colleague Martha agrees with me that, of course, it uh, depends on the learning style of the, uh, of the students. Uh, some are uh, uh, auditory, some are visual, some are even vac uh, uh, kinesthetic, although maybe not, yeah, maybe not in uh, higher education, but yeah, absolutely. And to motivation as well, because also there were answers from some students that they simply didn't have, a, so they didn't need an, a, to be motivated. So they said that this is, so they have their own motivation, they have their own aim, and whether the situation is good or bad, they will do their best in whatever way. So those who were um, uh, motivated, they did not suffer in this situation. Thank you. And just to add uh, to this uh, uh, one more nuance, uh, we found that uh, first and second year students needed more motivation than, for example, uh, third or fourth year students. And we explained this by the fact that the uh, more advanced students are maybe uh, more determined in getting their degrees, for example. Or, so the first and second uh, year students needed more motivation during online teaching. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, so we also have that, you know, some more questions from Fernando, who is from Brazil. He's asking the question about like, uh, in which ways have teachers and students benefited from online teaching? In, I'm sorry, could you please repeat? Yeah, in which ways have teachers and students benefited from online teaching? Oh yeah, I can tell you the, the direct way uh, for teachers is that we, as you have already mentioned, we acquired uh, the, our digital skills almost in no time. Actually, we were forced to do it. So we learned about uh, different uh, ways of uh, delivering our material online about different applications, about uh, different programs. So uh, uh, that was really in no time. So it was very rapid. We had to, we were forced to do it. Otherwise um, the educational process would, would have stopped and we could not let that. And uh, this is the same maybe for students. Although I can tell you students are, especially those who were born in the digital age, uh, maybe for them, this, uh, this uh, digital skills development was not that rapid or was not that uh, uh, conspicuous, but uh, yeah, they also mentioned this in uh, the questionnaires uh, that we were Okay, thank you so much. We have next question from... Uh from Mehri as well. 
She's asking, uh, could you please share two, three practical tips on how to make the online ses uh, lessons more engaging that you yourself use often? Uh, thank you. Actually, uh, what we have found um, very useful is uh, the use of the Google Jamboard. Um, I don't know if uh, the audience knows this or uses this approach, but maybe I have some time uh, to show it just one Jamboard that, that our students prepared. Can I share it? Just to see how, how it looks like. Yes, please. Maybe. So I myself, yeah, it. I myself teach the methodology of English language teaching to second and third year students. And um, uh, we have uh, the topic of remote teaching, which was a kind of uh, washback effect before uh, the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. Um, online teaching was not a common in Ukraine, but because of the uh, COVID, everything was changed. And as a washback effect, we also included this topic into the syllabus of uh, the discipline, uh, the methodology of English language teaching. And here you can see uh, what the students uh, prepared. So you can see the initials of the students in uh, um, the top uh, uh, left-hand corner. And uh, uh, they had one topic, if you see, in yellow. For example, this uh, student had uh, the topic using Facebook to teach English remotely. And actually, uh, the, the, the student's task was uh, to collect material on this topic and prepare a frame like this. If we go on different students or other students had other uh, topics. This student's topic was using the course book online, and she collected material, everything, and uh, she could put, uh, um, you know, these are sticky notes that you can move, uh, very useful, or a picture, then uh, a different one, uh, again, the uh, maintaining student motivation while teaching remotely, and so this was a, a central uh, topic that they had to prepare materials on. And um, next class, we discussed all the ideas. Uh, what is um, a benefit or what is um, significance or yeah, um, very good point in Jamboard is that uh, we can use it or we can share one file with all the students. And when we work with, a, uh, with such a frame, uh, every student, if they have the, the uh, accessibility, uh, the access to it, then uh, uh, everybody can uh, uh, work on the same topic at the same time. So actually, uh, Jamboard is something that we really like, and my students also like. So this is a very good idea, I think, not to use. Do you want me? To, can I can I ask a question? Yes. Sure. Yes. Can thank you. you can thank you, you Ilona. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry. Have you finished, Miss Misiba? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Please go ahead. Oh, uh, thank you so much. So this is Manisha. Thank you so much for a very interesting presentation you provided us for today. Um, thank you for all the speakers for all the today's speakers. And my question is, you know, like uh, turning to from in-person to online learning was not easy, both for students and teachers. We all suffered a lot because it was unexpected, right? So my question is like, everyone had some challenge. What was your challenge? I'm sure you have already mentioned your presentation. I was a little bit late, so I would be very happy if you could share some of your challenges you have, challenges you have you had like oh. uh, yeah that would be personally i found it uh, um difficult to be um to be objective when uh, assessing my students because you know um 
they have, well, as I mentioned, we use the Google Classroom uh, as an LMS in our uh, institute or at our college. And uh, it was difficult to assess because when uh, the students uh, uh, submitted the homework or the home tasks or any task they accomplished, then I liked everything about that. <laughs> so, uh, and then I just started to think, no, it cannot be so, so there must be something that I, I, I had to be very, very attentive, even more attentive than uh, during face-to-face -face teaching. So for me, my challenge was how to assess students. But I'm sure my colleagues have different challenges. Marshall, maybe you want to share with us your challenge. Thank you for the question. Actually, yeah, thank you for your, for your answer. <laughs> Actually, the biggest challenge uh, for me was uh, time management. So I suppose I'm not the only one who had this because uh, uh, at the same time, we had to prepare the material. We had to learn uh, how to use different sites um, uh, and, and uh, we had to check the students' work. And sometimes we just felt that it's impossible, that 24 hours is not enough. So, but I suppose it was everywhere in the world. So. Thank you. Thank you. I have, I have one more question. <laughs> okay. If you don't mind, do we have time? Do you have time, Ms. Nasiba? Can I? Uh, yes, we have a couple of more minutes. Uh, yes, please go ahead with your question. And then we have some more questions from okay. other participants. So, well. like, um, you know, uh, so if, you know, like as a teacher, you have experienced both uh, in person and online teaching, right? So if some, if you have a choice to teach in person or online, what would you choose? Very like what question. was the outcome of online teaching versus in person? So what would you choose? Was it, what was the quality of uh, student study? Okay, I see your question. Uh, yeah, I see your point. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, actually, I like teaching online. I didn't realize before the pandemic, but I like doing it. So I would definitely choose uh, online teaching uh, because, um, yeah, because the time management that Marta mentioned already, uh, we don't have to uh, spend time on uh, doing different things, for example, um, uh, just to travel uh, or go and uh, to the up to our workplace in the morning and then back again, but we are at home. so because we work, worked uh, from home office, so to say, uh, during online teaching and I liked it very much. So personally, that's my preference. That okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lona Hutsi. Uh, so we also have a, a question from Natya. She's asking, from my research, students were more productive, more involved, more willing to study when we had online lessons. Why so? What do you think? What was? Uh, what may be the reason? What has changed? Uh, actually, I have answered her question in the chat because we had the same result. Uh, so, uh, what um, uh, were the reasons? Is uh, that uh, first of all, uh, um, when they did not understand everything, uh, they, they, they had the chance to ask questions uh, in an online lesson, especially they had difficulties uh, with grammar. So some of the students pointed out that when they were studying German, German is a foreign language for them as well. So uh, they had um, difficulties with understanding some grammar points. And it was extremely difficult to understand without the explanation of the teachers. But when they had online lesson, they could clear out uh, all those areas that they did not understand from the notes. 
and uh, uh, I suppose that uh, they were more motivated. Uh, so when when we had online lessons, um, because uh, because um, uh, they, they they could speak. So as you mentioned, so we are language teachers. Uh, and uh, and speaking was um, uh, one of those areas that suffered the most. Mm, okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Marta Fabian. And uh, next question comes from Fernando. He's asking, what is the, big, uh, the biggest complaint you get from students in relation to online teaching? What we can do about it? Um, maybe um, students have to learn how to how to manage their time and how to keep the deadlines. Maybe that's the most uh, most uh, difficult, at least in our case, in our for our students. Um, so uh, they have to. Yeah, it's a very good uh, thing um, that uh, they have the notifications about the deadlines in the Google Classroom that we use at the college, uh, but still. Uh, very often it happens that students are lagging behind and uh, submit their uh, tasks uh, just beyond the, de the deadline. So um, this is uh, the problematic area for our students, I think. Mm -hmm. And what okay, to do? You. Yeah, I think there was the question what to do about it. Well, mm -hmm. we have to teach them and we have to um, tell them all the time how important deadlines are. So, because uh, in every sphere of life, deadlines are extremely important. And if, for example, I don't pay um, the common costs in time, then I will be fined. So, you know, it's just a very simple example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, also, we have the last question coming from Raihona. She's asking. Uh, so, uh, which way of teaching do you think is effective, online or in person? Again, based on your own experience. Yeah. Um, as I have said already, uh, for me, online is uh, equally um, effective. Uh, but of course, still, because we are used to, or we are, yeah, this is what we were taught when uh, we attended university, you know, uh, teacher mm -hmm. training courses, uh, it is still the offline. So there are more opportunities uh, for students, which are, of course, uh, uh, very beneficial. Yeah, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, we are very happy that uh, you know, more teachers uh, attended today's webinar, and I, I'm sure in the coming days there will be more viewers, of course, and uh, you know, all those who will be watching this, they will find some useful uh, tips for themselves. Yeah, how to improve their online teaching. Uh, once again, on behalf of English Without, Net, uh, Without Borders Network, let me convey our deepest gratitude for your time, for your energy, and for your uh you know delivering the webinar and um thank you so much my dear speakers dr elon Hutsi, uh dr ersbed baran uh dr Marta fabian uh, and dr ilona lechner and uh i'm sure that more webinars will be coming soon and we will be happy to host you again uh dear audience dear our regular uh attendees thank you again for your active engagement and uh, we look forward to see you again uh, in our next webinar next Thursday at 6 p.m. Tajikistan time. And wishing all of you to have a wonderful day, evening, or uh, morning, uh, because we have uh, teachers joining from different parts of the world. And uh, yeah, stay in touch. Sending you huge love and hugs. Thank you so Thank much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.